Hi there, um, this is Murph. Um, if you were wondering uh, about Linux as your server operating system and you like to move away from Windows servers and thinking about which Linux distribution to choose as your server operating system, then this might help. It may also help uh, if you are on a uh, if you're thinking about a career in Linux and kind of want to know uh, what are the best uh, server operating systems out there, uh, this might help as well, depending on the scenario. So, um, I've been working with Linux for quite some time, close to uh, 10 years, I believe, and I, I got a chance to play with many of these operating systems that I'm going to talk about um, and then kind of uh, go through each one of them. <clears throat> so, my number one pick is CentOS. So this is a uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux-based distribution uh, as free. So um, if you are a startup company where you don't have a budget for uh, enterprise support and but you want to use uh, Linux as your server operating system, then you might want to choose CentOS as your top number one. Uh, the reason for this is that Red Hat Enterprise Linux has been in the market for quite some time, uh, from the beginning, uh, actually, and they helped uh, the popularity of Linux on the server side from the beginning. And um, so having CentOS as your number one choice uh, will allow you to be uh, almost sure that it will work in most environments. Uh, there are many uh, uh, harder types that you will see on the enterprise or even if you're starting your own company and uh, you'll find that uh, CentOS will work almost with any kind of hardware and many vendors will have uh, drivers or packages for the CentOS environment because because of the popularity of Red Hat and CentOS both so uh, so I would choose CentOS as the number one. And then at some point, if your business grows, um, then you may want to go to uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux for your critical systems where you need uh, you need uh, support from Red Hat, right? So, and, it, and there are some also story, I believe, if you have a critical system, um, CentOS, and you want to get support, you can also contact Red Hat, uh, try them, they sometimes might help. Uh, I don't know how that one works yet, but I never had, uh, needed to contact Red Hat for CentOS issues. I found uh, in most cases on the community forum here. Um, it's very helpful actually, and and then um, resolved that way. Um, when you choose a distribution, you always try to, when a new version of the release is out, I would recommend you waiting for you know three to four months. Uh, and then go in. So for example, if, uh, if uh, 6.0 comes in, I would recommend you to wait until 6.1 is out, and then you uh, deploy that on your environment. Um, for home servers, I wouldn't say CentOS is that that uh, popular or useful. I would say, but I know it's up to you. It's your own choice. If you're a person who has a lot of experience on the Red Hat Enterprise Linux based uh, um, you know, uh, distributions, then this could be your choice. Uh, my number two is Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Okay, this is mostly for um, you know critical systems. Uh, so if you have you know uh, if you're a me to big company, I think you probably would already <laughs> choose it. You don't have to watch this video probably. You have a lot of people to think about this stuff, but uh, you know, I, I think uh, if you have a critical system that you want to get supported uh, by Red Hat, then Red Hat Enterprise Linux is the uh, best way to go. And and then they are, you know, uh, tested, well tested more than uh, CentOS releases. You know, uh, when Red Hat put their name on the you know, you know uh, distribution, then uh, they they test a lot more. And uh, but again, it's almost similar to CentOS and Red Hat. Uh, depending on us, you know, but that should be number two choice. And 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 the other thing that I wanted to say is, uh, when you deal with a lot of uh, enterprise applications like Oracle, um, you know MySQL, uh, 
you know, you'll find that a lot of vendors like Oracle, um, you know, can run well on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and there are documents published by Red Hat that kind of uh, explain you, walk you through the process of running those uh, enterprise applications. And if you choose Red Hat, uh, uh, you know, pay for it. Uh, I, I don't think it will be that expensive uh, as you know any other server or anything. You know what I mean? Uh, then you know you, it's better to choose this Red Hat in those scenarios where you have critical business critical applications and. And you know uh, Red Hat works with those applications, and they have the certification around those applications. Uh, so uh, that's also, you know, very useful. Uh, and Red Hat also have a big ecosystem, uh, like, you know, J JBoss, uh, you know, Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization, uh, Cloud Forms, uh, Satellite, a lot of other tools that basically go along, can, can, can play nice with the uh, with the uh, with your organization, if you are on a Red Hat based uh, ecosystem. So um, again, this is not for home server. I would say I would choose this uh, these two operating system for for my home server. Um, my number three will be Ubuntu LTS versions. Okay, so Ubuntu server, right? Um, this can be number one for many people depending on the environment. Um, Ubuntu also has a very good ecosystem, and and they have you know uh, uh, enterprise support, so you can basically you know get enterprise support with Ubuntu, and their LTS are basically more stable version for the server business critical applications. Um, if you are um, you know um, and um, and you'll find if you if you think about going to OpenStack at some point, you'll find Ubuntu has more resource over the web to to configure in the uh, OpenStack environment uh, on Ubuntu, and they're the number one distribution uh, with some survey from OpenStack that they're the most used uh, operating system in the OpenStack environment. So uh, again, it's Debian based, so the Command line, the, the file system is a little different. The command line is the same, but you know, file system is uh, the architecture is a little different, um, and uh, you know, and um, they also have you know pretty uh, uh, good community. Um, if you are going the free version, right? So and don't want to support, uh, this is a good choice. And they have a, another cool product called Juju, which allows you to deploy a lot of applications. Um, so Ubuntu can be your number three choice, I would say. It could be number one again, depending on your choice. So if you're working in a company that have been using a lot of applications with Ubuntu already, then definitely that will be something that you should continue using it. There's no need to change to something else, I would say. Now here's the interesting part. Ubuntu can be a very good choice for home server as well. Um, a lot of home users are not, they might already be familiar with Ubuntu desktop and for uh, for home servers like if you're trying to put a XBMC server or a Plex server um, you would find Ubuntu even you can use Ubuntu desktop as a server for a home server but if you want to you know use a server then you can still use it and you'll find a lot of uh, resource on the web uh, to get that going it will be easier for you to implement for your home so in that case I will also choose Ubuntu as the uh, home server choice. Okay, my number four is SUSE Enterprise Linux. Okay, and uh, in other words, it's also called SLES, depending on how you say. And sorry about that. Right. So this is something that I would, I wouldn't recommend until you need to. Uh, if your uh, company um, is heavily invested on the SUSE um, um, ecosystem, right? Uh, then I would guess you know that should be a choice. Uh, but it's I mean they they also have SUSE also have uh, quite an interesting you know ecosystem. They also provide enterprise support, right? There's also a benefit, I think, uh, 
if I remember correctly, there uh, if you're in a VMware environment and you want to use Slash, I think there's a, you can get some free entitlement of Slash uh, on VMware environment as well. So and then you'll find a lot of uh, VMware uh, appliances are based on SUSE, right? Uh, SUSE have a uh, SUSE gallery that can be also helpful for you to deploy some server operating systems. Uh, you know, uh, it's called so. So uh, as you see here, this is a SUSE website. You know, you can see a lot of products are, you know, they have a cloud version um, and, and they have quite a bit of product uh, for enterprise that can be, you know, can be, uh, you know, effective, right? Uh, attractive as well, right? So depending on, uh, if you're uh, new to the Linux world and your company already uses SUSE as the operating system and you want to make yourself familiar, uh, you know, you can choose SUSE as your, server for your home use as well and kind of get familiar with yourself. In that case, I, you can also try open SUSE as your desktop OS to be more familiar, right? That's a free version. Um, number five, my last one, which is kind of different than, than all of this, uh, which is clear OS, okay? Not many people know about this, but I like it. I got a chance to use it uh, many times, actually. And I was really impressed uh, how simple it is to use uh, uh, this operating system, right? So it's based on Red Hat, right? So if your company uses a uh, Red Hat a lot and you want a server uh, that can be acting and you want, uh, th that can be acting as a, a networking gateway or a file server or a web server or a um, directory server, ClearOS can be very easy to deploy, uh, and 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 they they have an open source version. ClearOS, if you search in Google, okay, and you will find they have a GUI actually that can allow you to configure. So once you can download a VM, so if you have a virtual environment in your enterprise or organization, and you're uh, you know you wanna deploy some Linux servers easily, and you don't wanna go too deep uh, at the beginning, then uh, you need something really quick, then ClearOS is something that you can download. They have a virtual appliance that you can download and then import in your virtual environment, or you can download their ISO and then deploy it. And once you deploy it, you can uh, just go to the GUI once it's configured, you know, the, go to the document, and you can just uh, you know configure it uh, very easily through the GUI. You don't have to go to command line at all. To be honest, and and they have a the interesting part is they have a kind of a clear OS marketplace, which basically gives you ability to uh, download different application. You can also pay pay subscription from them, and you can you know say you need a uh, you know uh, web proxy, right? You can just download that and you can uh, install it. Uh, in some cases. Uh, I found it also useful for home use as well. If I'm thinking about uh, building my own home um, in a firewall or a mail uh, spam filtering tool that I want to um, you know, use, I, 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 I think you can choose ClearOS as well here. And it's really impressive and I'm, I'm really interesting to so interested to see where they go. Uh, um, they have a server and they also have an uh, appliance actually. I believe... Uh, that you can buy, you know, physical appliance, um, professional service. So, you know, depending on your choice, you can go clear as community to begin with, which is free, and you can deploy it on your organization and then uh, and then use it. Uh, I also found it uh, when I'm building sandboxes, like, you know, it's a test lab or something. I need a router or I need a web server and a directory server real quick. Um, ClearOS was the winner. It was very easy to deploy and and, uh, and uh, you know get the job done or DNS server right so it's really impressive then I, I would I would uh, highly recommend to try it out um, so that's about it actually um, I hope this video helps if you like it uh, feel free to subscribe and I try to do this on my spare time I know if I get a chance I'll put some more content for you guys to enjoy uh, and thanks for watching.